YouTube, what's going on? We're back at it for another gun build video, and today we're going to be talking about the AS44. Absolute shredder when it comes to close quarters combat. We've got all the fire rate we need. We've got perfect hip fire accuracy and all the mobility that we could possibly want when it comes to a close quarters combat AER. Now, the thing that I could probably closest uh, resemblance this with is probably the FFAR, but it seems to have a stronger rate of fire than the FFAR. Almost feels like a PVSH, if you know what I mean when it comes to that rate of fire. But even faster than that. Now, when it comes to the Vanguard integration, when it comes to moving into Pacific Warzone, I could obviously see this being something like the FFAR, where it came in, had that really strong secondary close quarter type of uh, weapon that's an SMG util or an AR utilizes an SMG style just really melts people up close, has that rate of fire to destroy, and enough damage. Could arguably have more damage. Not too pleased with some of the damage values on this, but it's got enough to be a melter, absolutely chew through people, and all the mobility you'll need to work around them, avoid their fire, and just melt into them. We'll get into the attachments now, and also have some gameplay to showcase this build off. We'll start off with the muzzle. Early on, when you're leveling this weapon, you definitely want some recoil control or accuracy. This gun is going to be going all over the place in the beginning as a stock weapon. This is not a long range weapon. You will really be focused on close quarter combat with this, utilizing its mobility and hip fire. A lot of the attachments early on will help with the hip fire, sprint to fire speed as well. So utilize those to the best of your ability when leveling this. But once you finally level it up a bit, recoil booster is what I utilize for a lot of the leveling. And I even still use it now for the final build just increasing that fire rate but if you felt like it was still a little bit too out of control when you ads and try to fire you could go for the a f8 stabilizer gaining that accuracy and a little bit of damage range trying to push it for a more medium range combat as well when it comes to the barrel early on i use the empress 400 millimeter for that hip fire accuracy really strongly utilizing the close quarter combat of this uh hip fire ability but after that kova you know 420 millimeter burst this is something that could make it into a bit of a long range viable but the damage just didn't feel quite right to me you could increase the rate of fire on it helps it out a bit but a lot of times i just found this is better for close quarters and that's for a different build different day but once you finally level it up empress foul on a we're going to increase that fire rate and you'll notice right here we've got 1250 rounds per minute Ooh, we are dumping some mags into people really quickly with this one when it comes to the optic, I went with the slate reflector. We've got no negative to ADS. We do have a couple of other attachments that are slowing down our ADS, so I didn't want something I was going to slow anything down, and I needed something precise for those close quarter combat moments. You could go for the iron sight if you really wanted to, but since we have the ability to add, or since we have the ability to just throw on any one of these without having to take something away from different attachments, I went with the slate reflector, clear, precise, but obviously one of those that's all up to your personal preference. When it comes to the stock, early on you'll notice the stack, Zach Skeletal, who got that sprint of fire speed and movement speed and then remove stock for more of that hip fire accuracy. These are the two you'll probably utilize early on when leveling this weapon. Once you finally get down to it, Zach 12B Custom is going to be the one we finalize this build with. We need that aiming stability, a bit of flinch resistance, recoil recovery. And the big thing is initial accuracy and recoil now, why that's big for this build is we're, we're just pumping out so many rounds so fast that all we need is that initial accuracy and recoil. We don't need the sustained fire like with the Kobal, the, the custom. I'm just not even going to try and say that word. We just need it for that initial, considering it's, it's just melting people so quick with how fast we're firing. It, it's nothing more from sustained fire is going to be necessary, and a lot of times... If there are a group of people, maybe some off to the left and the right, you're going to be able to hold and sustain for those moments because it's just going to take no time at all to just melt through them. Now, early on when it came to the proficiency, I was using Gung Ho since we were utilizing a bit of that hip fire when leveling. Get that fire while sprinting so you're just able to run around and just fire from the hip. It's pretty fun. It's a good, nice little like novelty build, but not the perfect way to go about it. 
when it comes down to uh, actually finish out leveling the weapon, we went with momentum. Get that move speed after kills. This is going to help you in those moments where you're closing in, kill somebody in a doorway, push out, push back in, get the next person coming in, or push through the doorway after you get the kill. Just move in there a lot quicker, slide through, slide around the enemy, avoid their crosshairs, and just be able to melt them with that hip fire in that moment. Just have that added mobility. Now, since we have that... Uh, when it comes to the kit, I went with fully loaded since we've got a lot of fire rate with this weapon. We're going to be dumping mags pretty quickly, so we need that surplus and ammunition. We will have 60 rounds in the mag, and with fully loaded, we'll have another 300 ready for us. Especially when we're going to be moving through those closed quarters, we'll probably be already in the enemy spawn as well. You don't really have the time to constantly throw down one of those ammunition boxes, so... Make sure you've got plenty of ammo in store ready for any moment. But when leveling this, you could just use the surplus as well. Especially if you're early on with this and we don't have that rate of fire just yet. You're going to want to utilize that surplus with that hip fire. You'll have plenty of ammunition for yourself on that one. Rear grip in the beginning. Obviously, like I said before, this thing, it's got a lot of recoil on it. So you'll want to kind of utilize some of those recoil controls. But if you're going for that hip fire ability, fabric grip is going to be one of those. It's going to be pretty good for that sprint to fire and recoil recovery from the hip fire. Could go with grooved grip later on if you're looking for that burst fire type of weapon to utilize when uh, leveling this weapon. Polymer grip's another one as well. While leveling this, that could be good if you're trying to use this as something for a bit of a mid-range. Wouldn't say long range is going to be that viable with most of the attachments you'll get early on. But at the end of it, I went with stifled grip. We've got that recoil recovery and again that initial accuracy and recoil for those moments where we're just a snapping that ADS onto them, melting them quick, pulling out, moving, and then going to the next target. When it comes to the magazine, I was not too pleased with a lot of the damage values as you'll notice you know maximum is 32 with this gun and once we even get to the 60 round we're cut down to 24 you could arguably go with the gorinco 45 round mag for a bit of extra fire rate but as you'll notice we already go down to 19 with that found the sweet spot was a 60 round mag for our hip fire and close quarters combat and that added rate of fire really does supplement for that damage being lower and it's going to be it's going to be a melter but when it comes to the ammo type, I went with incendiary early on. You could go with frangible or possibly FMJ for a bit of that uh, bullet penetration. I tried hollow point, but a lot of times when it comes to the hip fire or just firing on somebody, especially in close quarters, not exactly always going to be hitting those limbs. So this is kind of a negative for you since it's only increasing the limb damage. And incendiary, every time we hit, we're we're dealing extra damage and the bullet velocity and damage range since it's close range we're not even worried about those negatives when it comes to the under barrel i did initially go for the carver four grip for a lot of this for the whole time leveling this just because of the hip fire this is going to help us now as well just to kind of help with that hip fire accuracy and a bit of that recoil control later on down the road if you possibly had a moment or you felt like it was still a little bit too much to control you could arguably go down and add for that accuracy if it had a little too much left and right bob for you. The M1941 hand stop could work for you, or you could arguably go for the M1930 strife angled. Just have that aim walking steadiness, aiming stability, and a bit of accuracy, but it's going to cut down on a sprint to fire time. Irritating. If you're going, and if you're going for a full-on hip fire build with this, the SMLE pistol grip is going to be perfect for that sprint to fire and hip fire accuracy. As well as if you possibly are not worried about the recoil control, you feel like you can control it, you could arguably just go straight for that SMLE pistol grip just for that added sprint of fire time. Alright guys, that's going to be the build for you. It's an absolute shredder. The rate of fire is whew, over the top right here. You're going to be melting some people. We've got some gameplay to showcase that. Obviously, there's going to be some different builds out of this that could be viable, especially when it comes to the Pacific War Zone, the burst fire. You can really amplify that burst fire with uh, the rate of fire that we've got with this gun. I mean, it could just be an absolute melter in Pacific War Zone, but it's not the strongest suit for Vanguard itself right now. This is probably arguably one of the better ones, just that close quarter combat and just utilizing that rate of fire to maximize the damage out of this weapon. But if you'd like to see uh, some of these guns getting leveled, kind of pick my brain, ask any questions about this, hit the link in the description or leave me a comment down below. And uh, 
more than happy to answer any questions over at Twitch. I'm streaming every day. We'll be leveling these up live each day, popping through another one. And soon enough, we will be making multiple builds for some of these since we do have the 10 attachments. There's a lot of different ways we can utilize these weapons. It's a bit more fun that way. It's one thing that's made Vanguard a bit different from Cold War and Modern Warfare is we have a bit more versatility with the weapons. It's definitely more enticing and a lot more replayability for me. And it's going to have a lot more replayability when it comes to that Pacific War Zone. And on that note, we'll get straight into the gameplay and have a good one. Get in there. This is the build for it, that's for sure.
actually spawn. <laughs> Yeah. Absolute clusterfuck.
God. Everybody's just everywhere on this map right now. I can't even, God, man. I can't even react fast enough for it. Oh my god. 